Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فَتَلَقَّى آدَمَ مِنْ رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتٍ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ إِنَّهُ هُوَ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ Very early on in the Qur'an as we're reading in Surah Al-Baqarah, we have the story of Adam alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about this story to remind us that just as he fell, he came back. And Allah says that he approached Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with some kalimat, with some words. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immediately forgave him because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the acceptor of repentance. He is the most merciful. Not because Adam alayhi salam deserved to be forgiven. Not because we deserve to be forgiven on the day of judgment. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that merciful. He's that forgiving. He has prescribed upon himself mercy before he even created Adam alayhi salam. He has prescribed upon himself forgiveness before Adam alayhi salam even committed that sin. So. What are what are the lessons we can take from these words? When Adam Islam called upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, Rabbana Walamna and Fusana. The kalimat, the words were, O oh Allah, O oh our Lord, we wronged ourselves. So it's unconditional. Look, we're not we're not gonna blame anyone else. Adam alayhi salam does not blame Eve as we established in the previous lectures. Adam alayhi salam does not blame Shaytan. He doesn't blame anyone. Shaytan blamed Allah. Shaytan said, it's your fault for putting me in this situation. Adam alayhi salam takes full responsibility, which is essential when you're repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They call upon Allah. Zalamna anfusana. We wronged ourselves. Not only did we wrong ourselves, in lam taghfir lana wa tarhamna, lana kunana min al khasirin. If you don't forgive us and have mercy upon us, then surely we will be amongst the losers. And this is powerful because they ascribe the sin fully to themselves but then they ascribe tawbah purely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or they ascribe forgiveness purely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning we are fully responsible for our own actions and we are completely in need of you. Meaning you are not harmed by our actions. It's only us who are harmed by our actions and we are not capable of surviving without you, O oh Allah. We need you, Ya Allah. You know, think about if you were to have done something with your parents. Right? If you've done something with your parents, if you've committed a wrongdoing with your parents, you go back to them and you apologize and you take full responsibility and ownership of that which you've done. You don't say, mom, dad, you did this and you did that. No, you fully messed up. And then you say, look, mom, dad, I need you. I need you. I, I, can't, I can't afford to have you mad at me. I need you. I love you. This, this is the essence of Adam alayhi salam coming back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are many beautiful things that we can take from this. One of them is that the tawbah, the repentance is unconditional. Adam alayhi salam is not saying to Allah, Oh Allah, I'm seeking your forgiveness, so please don't expel me from Jannah. The, the goal is not to have something material in this world. You know, and that's what makes an insincere apology. When you apologize, when, when you know, and, and this is very relevant to me, you know, my own children, uh, when I try to point out something they did wrong, and when I point it out, Baba, I'm sorry, please don't take away my can candy, please don't take away my toys. It doesn't work that way. That's insincere, right? That might work for a six year old, but that doesn't work for an adult when they're repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's, it has to be unconditional, it has to be sincere, and you have to want nothing out of that except for the forgiveness of Allah. And if your repentance is sincere, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of you both in the dunya sense and in the akhirah sense, both in the worldly sense and in the sense of the hereafter. We also see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who gave Adam these words to repent with. Just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the asma, he gave him the names of all things, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired him with the proper words to make tawbah with, which is a sign that Allah wants this man to repent. He wants this woman to repent. He wants to help them seek forgiveness in the proper way. And these karimat, these words that Allah gave to Adam alayhi salam, it's the same concept as on the day of judgment, when the Prophet sallallahu says that as I enter upon my Lord and I fall into sujood, I fall into this prostration, Allah will give me these muhammad, He'll give me these words of praise that I have never known before. I never would have been able to say before. The Prophet ﷺ couldn't even tell us what those words were. But Allah will give the Prophet ﷺ the right words to properly be able to intercede on behalf of mankind. And that's the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Have you ever noticed when you're calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes in a really sincere dua, the way that the words are flowing? That's not your own eloquence. That's Allah putting those words on your tongue. And that's what Umar radiallahu anhu says that, you know, I don't concern myself with the answer of a dua, I just concern myself with the ability. Because if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows your tongue to move and He allows your heart to speak through that tongue, then Allah wants to give you something. 
And this is a beautiful concept that we have here. We also see that Adam alayhi salam, after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave him, and Allah says he forgave him right away. Fataba Ali. Right away, he 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 forgave him. Adam alayhi salam, nevertheless, he still felt a sense of regress, uh, of regret. He still regretted that sin. Just because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave you for it, doesn't mean that you don't still have a point of regret. That doesn't mean you you beat yourself up over it. No, but you continue to remember if you start getting ahead of yourself and you start getting conceited and you start thinking that you're content with your good deeds and you're content with your situation. Remember that there was a time that you made these mistakes and had it not been for the forgiveness of Allah, you would have remained a loser. And we find that Jibreel alayhi salam came to Adam alayhi salam as Adam alayhi salam frequently used to cry. Even as he came to this dunya, he would frequently cry over that incident. And Jibreel came to Adam alayhi salam and says, Ya Adam, ila mata tabki? Oh Adam, until when will you cry? You know, subhanAllah, are you going to continue to cry over this for the rest of your life, for the rest of your existence? And Adam says, Da'ni avki ya Jibreel, leave me to my tears, O Jibreel, faqad aznabtu dhamban wa asaytu rabbi, because I committed a sin and I disobeyed my Lord. This should not make a person dive further into despair, but instead it should inspire a person to continue to get better, to continue to rise and to continue to draw closer to his Lord or her Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we also find that Adam alayhi salam, as he is in the earth and as he's calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as he's still seeking forgiveness, though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already forgave him for that sin, Adam alayhi salam calls upon Allah and he says, Rabbi, anta khalaqtani biyadik. Oh my Lord, you created me, you fashioned me with your hands. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Na'am ya Adam, yes O Adam. So he says, Ya Rabb, alam tasjid li al-malaika. He says, Oh my Lord, didn't you cause the angels to prostrate towards me? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bala ya Adam, yes O Adam. And he says, Ya Rabb, alam a'tas, uh, alam a'tas fa, fa qult, ya, didn't I sneeze? And then you said, Yarhamuka Rabbuk, didn't I you know, sneeze, and you were the one who said to me, may your Lord have mercy on you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bala ya Adam, yes, so Adam. So Adam alayhi salam says, Rabbi, in anatubtu ilayk, if I, re- if I make sincere repentance to you, wa anabtu, and I really, really continue to live my life, turn towards you, will you return me to Jannah? Hal anta raji'i ila al-Jannah? Are you going to return me to Jannah? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Na'am ya Adam, yes so Adam, you will return to Jannah so long as you continue to repent, so long as you draw close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This promise was made to Adam alayhi salam even as he was sent to this earth and to Eve and to all of the descendants. That guidance will come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whoever follows Allah's guidance then they should not grieve, nor should they feel a sense of fear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will return them back to their home. And it is the it is the eventual return of all of the believers, all of the people that live in this earth, so long as they continue to flee towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to run towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, admit their mistakes and try harder, Allah will certainly secure their places in Jannah.